Hello, Alison. Hi, Tori. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, buzzing. How are you? Yeah, great, thank you. I've seen some of your videos so far today. You're doing a grand job. Oh, you're, you're too kind. Thank you. I was just busy choking on a drink, actually. Let me just, um, I'm just ensuring that this is live on Facebook. Two ticks. Hang on. Uh, put your name um, so that everyone can find you afterwards. Um, right, go live. So I think it gets us from the beginning, but yeah, I'm never sure. So, um, so tell us about you, Alison. Um, for everyone listening, Alison Watson, she's amazing, inspiring, um, professional, um, mum, um, and a million other things. Tell us what you do, Alison. Hi, okay, so um, I'm mum to David, uh, my son, uh, he's 23 years old now, and he has a very rare epilepsy called Ring Chromosome 20 Syndrome, which I'm sure many, many people won't have heard of at all. We could, we could talk a little bit about that. Um, and um, I run a patient support group um, for um, families uh, who've got someone with David's condition, so we call it Ring 20 for short, makes it much easier. Um, so we, I run a, a Ring20 Research and Support UK. We support just over 100 families worldwide uh, with uh, Ring20. Is that uh, rare then? It's pretty, pretty rare, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we're on the um, very rare end of the rare diseases. Um, but we do think it's underdiagnosed um, and underreported. Um, so that's something we'd really like to change and maybe some people listening here today may have some ideas about that. We actually had um, a gentleman call in earlier um, who's the founder of Epi Hunter and his um, son has Ring20. I don't know if you saw that one. I haven't yet seen Tim's but I, it's on my to-do list to watch. So, you know, never um, ending to yeah. do it, eh? Okay, so we have uh, questions which you've kindly given to me to ask. So. Um, excuse me, sounding formal here. So, as the deputy lead for EpiCare EPAG, um, can you briefly please explain what it is and why you got involved? I think I can guess this answer, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, so Tori, you know something about this, but maybe some of the other people won't. So, for those people that don't know um, what is EpiCare, um, the EpiCare is a European Reference Network, or ERN. So, excuse for these. Uh, lovely <laughs> abbreviations that everybody's going to get confused with and they represent the rare and complex epilepsies. So their mission is primarily to diagnose and treat and care for people with um, rare, the most rare epilepsies. Now many people think of epilepsy as a single disease um, yeah. and epilepsy as we, we know is quite common generally, it's the most common neurological disorder. However, there are many, many rare and complex epilepsies that are individual diseases in their own right. In fact, there's, I think, about 130 plus that have been defined to date, of which Ring20 is one of those. And Epicare is there to, to represent um, the needs um, of patients with these much rarer epilepsies, which are typically, by definition, they're complex, um, they're difficult to treat, and they come with a lot more than just the seizures. Um, there's perhaps a whole spectrum of other symptoms and disorders that, that have to um, be managed and, and dealt with by the individuals, the families and, and the healthcare professionals that support these people. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's trying to meet the needs of, of that specific community and the many thousands of um, families and individuals affected across the whole of Europe. Mm -hmm. So I am, as you are, Tori, indeed, but I, I kind of co-lead um, the patient advocacy group. So we are the European patient advocacy group. So that's EPAG, EPAG, for sure. I've already said uh, um, uh, about too many acronyms and I can't remember them all, but I know this one now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, way too many acronyms. So, <laughs> so we advocate uh, on behalf of the patient families um, and we work together in collaboration with clinicians, the research, the doctors that run and look after Epicare. So these are the experts around Europe that um, they are the most knowledgeable experts that we have, um, you know, in, in this particular area. Um, and they can come together, bring their knowledge and expertise, but 
and what we bring to the table as patient representatives is the needs of the patient families. So whilst the doctors yeah. are thinking very much from a clinical and research perspective, we bring that very different perspective of what do their patient families actually want? What do they actually need? What's going to make a difference to their lives today and tomorrow? Maybe in, more in the short term, what are the practical things that we need help with that could really make a difference to our lives and make our lives better? Because I think um, many of us acknowledge that they're, you know, ep epilepsy is a very difficult to treat. Um, we won't have a treatment tomorrow, next week, next year. You know, we, we live with that and we learn to live day to day with seizures. Um, they're just part of daily life and we kind of just get on with it. No matter well, your how son bad even it. had one in the background, I, me I remember a few months ago when we were on a call, didn't he? And you're like, oh, sorry, gotta go. But there was no panic because you unfortunately kind of used to it. <laughs> you, you kind of get a little bit like that. And people that don't live with this every day kind of going, shock, horror, panic, <gasps> having a seizure, what do we do? Call an ambulance. And they, when these things happen four, five, six times a day, you're kind of like, oh, well, it's another one. This is what we do. Process Keep them safe, ensure right? they're out of danger. You do. And you get on with life. Um, and, you know, we don't make epilepsy and the seizures the barrier to, to getting on with life. We look at the can-do attitude. We look at, you know, what, what can be done, not what can't, what we can't do, because that's just a negative and we don't need negatives. <laughs> well, indeed, there will be enough for um, automatic negatives, negatives every day. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, we need to try and focus on positive things. But I think, and I was talking to um, Charlie um, Sheward about this earlier, it's a great meeting other people affected by epilepsy, whether it be um, fellow patients, whether it be mums, dads, carers, whatever, but even like mates, because they go, oh my goodness, what do I do? And it's like, chill out, mate, that's what you do, okay, right, bye. And you know, it's not that simple, but sometimes you kind of just have to look at it that way um, when you can, when you're not having a meltdown and because that's stuff that happens too. Um, and what I've, I mean, I, not everyone likes me saying this, but I, since working with Epicare, um, I personally found more similarities between myself and those with rare epilepsy than, than differences. Because even though I, well, as far as I know, I don't know, maybe there's a genetic component to my epilepsy, for instance. Um, uh, like I can empathize with the seizures that they have, the loss of control, it affects every part of your flipping life. It is just pretty depressing to be honest. And, and then when you have cognitive dysfunction as a result of things, you know, mine isn't as, as extreme as many people's and I'm not having a squillion seizures a day and I do have partially controlled seizures, but there's still, <clears throat> because of the negative side, you know, I think a lot of us can empathize to a degree and we needn't have such a barrier between those with our bog standard, if there is such a thing, epilepsy, and those with the rare epilepsies, i.e. we should be able to pay attention and support rare epilepsies, right? Oh, oh definitely. I think, you know, the, the whole thing, the great thing about part of the patient advocacy group is sharing experiences and recognising the similarities that we all share, the similar challenges we all share. So, yeah. We don't focus on the bad stuff, but we do look at what can we do to change it. And, you know, we may have different diseases um, and this is across the epilepsies, but this goes wider as we're seeing in the, in the patient advocacy space across all the rare diseases. We share so many common um, challenges and issues. Um, and there can be some similar ways in which we can address those together by by talking and, and working together and working with our doctors, um, we can actually say, well, do you know what? If we could have this, this would really help us. And sometimes that's not just about the meds that you want. You know, we're all realistic enough to know that, you know, we're not going to get cures, probably not in our lifetime. Yeah. But, you know, what can we do better to manage day to day? And, and what can, can we do better to make lives better? And, and that's why I love working in the space I love working with. Uh, Epicare and um, patient group and and the wider rare disease group because you're just fantastic people that have such a positive uh, uh, you know outlook on life 
and you've really got to keep that in mind um, because we're, we're all driving to the same thing. We all just want better lives, better outcomes for our loved ones or for ourselves. Mm, indeed. indeed. So this is fab. This is fab. Um, so God, I have to bring this to the close because we've gone way over. I've gone over. Oh. Um, but <laughs> if anybody wants to contact you, how should they do that? Okay, so you can find us on Twitter at Ring Twenty UK. You mm -hmm. can email me um, Ring Twenty. That's R I N G two zero at Ring Twenty Research Support co UK. We also have a Facebook group. We're all Ring 20 Research Support um, UK. Um, and if you want to find us uh, from an EPAG perspective, so European Patient Advocacy perspective, we're epag.epicare at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter, so check us out. 